Imagine this was your daily commute to work. Imagine you had to walk down this road every day to get to school. There are 22 schools in the area surrounding Fisherman's Rest, and they're currently actively involved with eight of those. But it's not about buying a blackboard or books. Nothing out here is that simple. Food is part of the education. And if the kids are coming to the school and they're hungry, um, then they're not going to focus. What's more, a lot of these kids are out there looking for food instead of coming to school. So by providing them food, they come to school to get their meal. Part of the deal is they get their meal if they come to school, therefore they come, you know, they've got to attend for the whole day. So the food is very important. Many of these kids that come here to, you know, don't get a meal. This is their main meal of the day. And so they are focused on getting here. When it rains, it rains torrentially. Now, the school at that time would normally be empty, but because they're coming for their food, even when it's raining, the kids are here. The problem here in this particular school is they come to school, but they've got nowhere to go in the school. They're under the trees, they're getting wet, they're here all day. It's, it's all a bit of a difficult cycle. So the food comes first just to start engaging with the kids and getting the school to function because they're actually eating. And then things that come with that, the good water that has to be brought in, the loo's that got to be dug and that kind of thing. And once well, that's happening, the shelters, good school block, and you know, we just move on. The, this is very basic stuff. It's really at the beginning. We had to switch cars to get to the next school on Vic's Round. But even a modern four-wheel drive won't get us to this school. We parked the car just behind us because obviously we can't cross here. This is one of the challenges for the kids because when the rainy season arrives, they want to get across this river to their porridge. Oh right, look at that. So they literally have to cross here? Well, they cross here and today it's not bad. Um, problem is that when the rains come and it starts to uh, come down the valley, then this water can be as high as the bank beyond us. At what point the children will fail to come across is touch and go. It depends on what risk they're going to take to get to their food. They're desperate to have this food. The porridge is a great attraction to the school, but for us now it's become a little bit of a concern because we, we've now seen the risks I'll take. Today we'll go across, it'll be maybe knee height, maybe some more. But um, you know, after some rains, this will be neck height to some of the children and they'll still try and get across holding on to each other. I just can't imagine what it'll be like when the river's up here, you know? When, traditionally, when it rains and it rains heavily, the children just don't go to school. Yeah, okay. um, but now they're going to get fed, they want to get to their food. Right. And at school, even when it's heavy rain, quite a high flow, that a third of the children that attend have crossed this river. Next project for us, sadly for us, is that we're going to have to somehow get a bridge here. And has there been any accidents? Well, I'm afraid to say that um, this rainy season, uh, we know of five people that have died around about this area. It's uh, a husband and wife and a child were swept down the river and then a mother and a child on the back were lost uh, a few weeks ago here as well. But it just shows though the impact and the significance of providing some food for the children. It's flowing reasonably fast right now, but you can imagine if you've got a metre or more of more water here, a wall of the stuff is coming through and fast. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, great fun. The kids do have fun in it, but there's a time for that. And uh, when, it, when the water's safe, it's just something we've got to take head on, except the fact that they've got to be educated. And so we just find a way of making sure that we can meet these challenges. So this is the school? These were put in a few years ago by an agency. The community didn't do this, the government didn't do it. So again, it's a well-wisher, it's a volunteer, it's an institution from outside this country that's done it. If they hadn't, it wouldn't be here. It'd be a shack, it'd be nothing, it'd be a tree. So yeah, it is here, but they didn't. The government didn't pay for this. And same with the kitchen that's coming, the food that's coming in. So it is a good thing that somebody came in and built this. Absolutely so. And therefore you've got a thriving school and something that we can come in on and work with and bring our volunteers in to expand on what we're doing. Very much so. What we saw earlier in the school before was the finished kitchen. This here is an example of the temporary shelters they build to cook in. Um, so the new kitchen is being built behind us, but for the moment and for the next two months, this is the kitchen that they'll continue to cook in. One of the seven deadly sins that we talk about with the Ethical Volunteer is people coming out and paying for buildings or bridges or wells and then leaving and not involving the community. This is, I guess this is the way it should be done. If you're going to give donations, this is the right way of doing it because they are using Fisherman's Rest as the facilitator in the centre uh, in between the donor and the community and Fisherman's Rest are ensuring that the community are completely involved in every step and that they won't continue to facilitate the development of the community unless the community is fully involved from the beginning. What Vic is showing me here is how 
these things wouldn't be here and the community wouldn't be benefiting unless they got engaged and started to build, but they really are bringing the community into it from the beginning stages, getting them involved, getting ownership on the projects by getting people working, carrying the bricks for kilometres on end from where they brought them up to here. That's all the community that's doing it. It's the community committees that are deciding on how this project goes ahead in partnership with Fisherman's Rest. It's a really interesting one for me to see today, I think, how using the donations and combining them with partnership with the community is really, really helping these communities. Why do you care? Why do you, why do you want to be here doing this? Right. Have you not, like, after three years, had your fill and gone grand, so I'll leave this to someone and I'll go home? So you're not. You never stop caring. You never stop. When you're passionate about something, when you enjoy what you're doing, when you see the benefits, when you see the results, it's lovely. It's, one, one cares because one loves to see the results. Because people engage, if the community wasn't developing with us, it certainly wouldn't be worth being here. We'd move on. So, so it's a partnership, really. We're here helping. We see we can help. They're receiving the help, doing well with it. You know, it's, it's a great joy to give. It's fun to be given something, it's, it's fun to receive. But to give and to see the smile on somebody's face because you've blessed them. To see somebody do better because you've given them a leg up. To experience that gratitude when you see them as a friend waving in the street because they've been given a bit of help. It's a mindset. When you get into doing this kind of thing, it is an absolute joy to share and to give and to do. And to bless each other and receive yourselves. Yeah. It's just good.